Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. And before I go any further, you know it, you know what time it is. This is Jesus Pride Month, and I pray that you are enjoying this month and making a big deal out of the fact that the rainbow belongs to the God of the Bible. And that as Christians, you know what? We're tired of being pushed around. Oh, and they tell us to be quiet. And they're trying to relegate us to silence and shut up, minister. You are so judgmental. Oh, and they're trying to just shut us up while everybody else is making noise. The devil is a liar. And I thank God for being good and thank God for his keeping power. Now, I'm trying to look at this, my friends. They are at it again. They're at it again. The baker in Colorado who won a who got a partial victory from the Supreme Court uh, back in around 2018. He refused to make a wedding cake for a same sex couple. Never mind the fact that he had made wedding cakes for one of the couples for years for years the man was coming in getting his cakes baked and there was no problem between him and the baker the baker is a born-again believer who guess what he takes his religion seriously he really believes the scripture he really believes the bible he's not one of these christians who believe that you should put your religion down when it comes to politics you should put your religion down when it comes to business you should set your religion aside when it comes to things like entertainment or stuff like that this guy actually believes that everything else should be governed by his relationship with jesus christ Hey, uh, he's, he's, uh, uh, there are few Christians like him today. I mean, Christians today are just casting off Christianity for everything. We have turned in the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible for the CDC. We've traded Jesus Christ for Tony Fauci. And, and there are still churches out there that are closed. But back to this. This man is being sued again. This is the way that the devil does tries to put pressure on you and to try to drive you out of business. Guess what? Now, a homosexual, a transgender, the third sex or the fourth sex, it depends on how you look at it, are suing him because they wanted him. And this transgender uh, is a man who's a lawyer. He's, 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 he's trying to become a woman. It'll never happen. The DNA don't lie. And by the way, whatever happened to the people who said, trust science? You got to trust science. You're a science denier if you don't believe in global warming. You don't trust your anti-vaxxer if you don't believe that you should allow them to put a novel vaccine that was rushed to market without FDA approval in your body and you can't sue anybody if everything, if anything goes wrong. So they label you for that. But then they turn around, these same wicked people turn around and they ask us to believe that a man can turn himself into a woman and a woman can turn herself into a man just by mutilating their bodies, even though the DNA never changes. This is a messed up world. Well, let me tell you, they have come after the man again and uh, uh, they are, uh, they want him to make a trans cake a cake to celebrate the transitioning of a bad man. Uh, He's mad. He thinks he could turn himself into a woman. And you real women out there, you ought to be mad too because you know a man can't become you as awesome as God made you, as beautiful as you are. Oh my, it's a botched job. You talking about a mess, something that's messed up when a man tries to become a woman and equally messed up when a woman tries to become a man. You can't do it. You can never be this, ladies, just as I and no man can ever be you. 
God made you and he made you beautiful and he made you wonderful. And he brought Eve to Adam and Adam said, now this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. And she shall be called woman because she was taken from the man. And I'll tell you, you talking about a, a mate that God brought to Adam, a help meet. She didn't look like the lion. She didn't look like the giraffe. She didn't look like the ape. She didn't look like the alligator nor the crocodile. She didn't look like... A dog, the canine, didn't look like a bird, didn't look like anything uh, uh, that he had seen before. God brought all the animals and everything to Adam, and Adam in his brilliance named every one of them, but he found no one compatible to him. And God didn't make a Steve. God didn't make another man. God made, he created a woman. Someone said one time that God took femininity from Adam and made Eve. Nothing could be further from the truth for there is no evidence that Adam was ever feminine in the first place. Adam was born grown <laughs> from day one, a grown man from day one with a full vocab vocabulary from day one. Adam is the only man who never crawled before he walked from day one. God gave him a job. <laughs> So I'm saying, I want you to take care of this garden called Eden, this huge, vast uh, uh, swath of land. I want you to till it and work it. And God, I tell you what the Bible said that God took from Adam. God took a rib. And Adam mentioned that she's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So God took a rib and God took some human flesh and made the most beautiful creature. I know all the men out there clapping, saying amen. Most beautiful creature God ever made. Hands down. The ugliest woman is prettier than the best looking man. God made her and brought her to Adam. So now in Denver, they are trying, here they are, they're trying to put the man out of business. Thank God for Alliance Defending Freedom, who did defends him. Here is this man who's having a trans party of all the bakers in Denver that he can uh, get to bake him a cake. They go to the Christian guy. You know what it reminds me of, Gary? It reminds me of what they did to Daniel. Remember, remember, they could find no fault in Daniel's lifestyle, they could find no fault in Daniel's work ethic. That's saying something right there. They could find no fault in Daniel's, uh, uh, how he carried himself as a, as a human being, in his, in his integrity, in his morality. So you know what they did? They tried to use the law against him. They made up a law. They just pulled one out the air. They made up a law and said, uh, a king for the next uh, 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 so much time, I believe it's 30 to 60 days, uh, uh, 90 days, where no one can worship any God but you. And if they pray or worship any God, if they pray to anyone but you, says the king, we're going to throw them in the burning, fiery furnace. You know the story of Daniel and how, uh, and you know why they made this law? Because here's what they could count on. They knew that Daniel, they could count on him. They knew that regards to what law they come up with, Daniel would keep praying. He wouldn't stop praying because he took his relationship with God, seriously, had Daniel been the average modern day Christian, it would have never even been a problem because he would have closed his church. He would have shut down his prayer It's just for a short period of time, you know, because you got to make sure you're good and safe and safety is above all else. And we got to keep our members safe. And, and, and I guess obeying God puts you in danger. So Daniel, they knew that Daniel took his relationship with God seriously. And you know what Daniel did? Daniel prayed three times a day, according to the scriptures. Now, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did 
afore time. Daniel wasn't like these guys today. Oh my. And it wasn't 90 days for the next 30 days. Excuse me. Daniel wasn't like the preachers today. Hey, we got to keep our people safe. We got to make sure we don't do anything to violate the rules. Daniel said, oh no. I've been praying to my God, and, and by the time we get here, Daniel's an old man. I've been praying to my God. He's watched over me all of my life. I'm going to keep praying. And you know what he did? He stood his ground. Well, in Colorado, they knew that if they would approach this baker, because the man takes his relationship with Jesus Christ seriously, he's a good Bible man. Thank God for him. They knew that that man was not going to bake a less celebrate transition. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard of, of in my life. Let's have a transition celebration cake. And they went to, of all people, him. They knew he wouldn't do it. And you know what they're trying to do? They're at it again. They're trying to sue him out of business, wrap him up in the courts, to kill his business. Praise the Lord. I pray that the saints in Denver, I pray that the church folk in Denver, that the Christians, whether you're black or white, I pray that the churches in Denver just develop an appetite for cake. Order cakes, order cakes, order cookies. You know you love to eat. Order the things. Order them from him. Stand by this man. As a matter of fact, I'm going to find out how I can get in touch with him. I'm going to send him an offer. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I want to support him because he needs support. Look at the wickedness of the pervert community, how they are trying to destroy this man. When there are bakers, there are stores galore. They have their choice. Most of the bakers in, in, in Denver have no conviction about this thing. One way or the other, they're just business people trying to make money. They don't care. But this man is serving the Lord. He's about like the Jew serving God, the Hebrews in the Old Testament and Jews today who serve God, but they had to contend as businessmen with the law of the Sabbath. God said, shut down, shut down from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. That's a big business day. God says, trust me. I'll make up the difference for you. What a mighty God we serve. So my friends, you know, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I want to read an excerpt from you uh, from uh, the book for such a time as this. This is a must read that you've got to have. Mary Frances Foster and Rebecca uh, Anthony wrote this book and it deals with the life of Senator James Foster and his fight for marriage in North Carolina. And here's a Here's a powerful quote uh, from the book. And um, uh, Archbishop Charles uh, Caput is being quoted here. It says, evil preaches tolerance until it is dominant. Then it tries to silence good. Nothing can be more true. He is exactly right. They preach tolerance until they can get into the majority. And all of a sudden, it's like this uh, cancel culture. Oh, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Just because I disagree with you, now my voice doesn't have a right to be heard. Just because we may disagree, I don't have a right to work or to, to, to feed my family or to, to serve in society. This cancel, cancel culture is of the devil. And one of the reasons these cowards, uh, councils, they, they, they use this strategy, it's a simple reason. They can't defend their argument. They, they can't win in the arena of ideas. They can't win when it comes to talking about things and we just sit down and discuss things. So you know what they do? They label you. They label you either a racist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, whatever, whatever. They name, a Bible thumper, a, a, a holy roller. They label you so that they don't have to discuss things with you. And because they can't, win the argument. But I'm calling for Christians out there to get fired up just as I am about the things of God. My friends, I've read the last page of the book and we win. We win. We win. We win. We win. Now tonight, I'm, I'm closing out tonight. That will, I can't invite you to join me at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight because we are in our AIM service in the 
uh, North Carolina third jurisdiction, and uh, I will be with uh, the, the men and women of God in Burlington, North Carolina tonight, uh, where the AIM chairman, Superintendent Willie Bamberg, will be ministering the word of the Lord. It's that time of the year for us, my friends. And I tell you, it's been a tremendous week, and the emphasis has been on uh, uh, God's people. God's people, God's servants, worshiping servants, serving God in the spirit of truth, in the spirit and serving God in the spirit and in truth. And we've been reaching out to our youth. And I tell you, it has been a tremendous week and I'm excited about it. Yours truly will be preaching there tomorrow night. Uh, we will try to find the, the call letters and where we will be on YouTube and where we will be, where you can find us. But my friends, stay fired up. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus pride. Thank God for the Supreme Court. we got a good ruling. And, and, and it was a majority rule with no dissent. Guess what they ruled on? And this had to go all the way to the Supreme Court. But thank God, common sense, Christian thinking, common thinking, common thinking prevail. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, had tried to sue the Catholic Church when they, and, and told them that they got to take the orphanage, the little orphans, and among other things, place them in the homes of same-sex couples. So much for believing that the best environment for children is a mom and a dad. I wonder what happened to that. We believe that forever. We believe that throughout the entire existence of the human race. Until of late, we've lost our minds. Anybody who thinks that two men can equal a mother, or that two women can equal a father, have gone bonkers. There's something wrong. I thank God for my mother. I thank God that my mom is yet in the land of the living. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. No two men, no two men, no 20 men, no 30 men, no 1,000 men. All the men in the world could have never been to me what that one lady has been in my life as my mother. Now, maybe your opinion of your mother is so low that you think two men could equal your mom. But I don't think so, my friends. I think you agree with me. I think we agree with common sense. We agree with the God of the Bible. They say that there's a proverb. There's a proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Well, the, but there are scriptures that says it takes a mom and a dad. So I think I'm going along with the Bible. And uh, I think that uh, that uh, I thank God that they did rule that the Catholics did not have to violate their religious beliefs and take orphanage, orphans, orphans and put them into the hands of same sex couples. Lord, thank you for this. Now, Father, we just praise you for this day. I thank you for the audience today. Thank you for our friends who are tuning in. I've run a little long today, but this is my message and, and my way when it seems uh, that I'm not going to be able to you join me for service. I like to give you, uh, uh, let you know where I am and what I'm thinking about. Let's pray together. Father, continue to bless us and keep us. God, I pray that you strengthen the saints, strengthen the believers. God, renew and, re and restore and regenerate your mind right that. Now, the Lord anoint you to be a warrior for Christ. God anoint you to anoint you to stand your ground in the name of Jesus. And may the blessings of God be upon you, be upon your family, be upon your life in the name of Jesus. And if you stand for the God of the Bible, my friends, the God of the Bible will stand for you. So continue to stand and let's continue to celebrate Jesus Christ, thank you for all the kind things that you've been saying to me about my, about my flag and all of that. You know, I'm all into it. <laughs> I love it. I believe that we've been born to stand our ground. Uh, uh, a coach told me as I go off, 
you know, I'm a church of God in Christ preacher. We end our messages 20 times before we actually close them. But I heard uh, uh, someone say the other day that the devil is trying to reestablish the scrimmage line. And I used to play football and I played the offensive line. And one of the things that the offensive lineman uh, had to do is to establish and protect the land, the line of scrimmage and and uh, and advance it. That's how you score. You got to advance the line of scrimmage until you get into the your opponent's uh, end zone. Well, I'm for advancing the line of scrimmage. The Bible says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Woo. I got to go. I'm fired up. I love you so. Make it a great day and continue to stand for the God of the Bible. Happy Jesus Pride Month to all of you.